Hey guys, what's happening? So, yeah, check out this uh, old band I just picked up on offer up. So, got a pretty good deal on it, 35 bucks. Uh, you didn't have a blade on it, but uh, yeah, it's a cool set. American Made Craftsman, super heavy, you know, all cast iron. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna be doing like a lot of stuff with metal, so I needed a way to cut the metal. Uh, CNC, um, I got a mill. Let me show you that real fast. In the upcoming videos, I'm also going to show you guys this thing. This is another offer up score, 500 bucks. Um, it was already converted to CNC, but let me go back to the Bantha. I got so many products, going to easily get sidetracked. All right, so what am I going to do with this one? So I'm going to take it apart, paint it, clean it. Um, you know, some of the stuff is kind of locked up. Uh, the bearings are kind of locked up, so I'm going to put those on my ultrasonic cleaner my, in diesel. And uh, I'm going to cut down that frame. Um, the frame is a little bigger than I want, so it, they kind of made it a little bit too big, the guy did, whoever got it from him. Um, go through the motor, paint everything, clean everything up. Um, what's interesting too is that when, they, when you buy these saws, these are, this is from like the 60s or 70s, and I found the manual, you know, and I was actually looking at the Harbor Freight ones, like the cheaper Harbor Freight ones. Uh, well, they weren't cheaper, but they're just the newer style ones. Um, and they didn't have actually that hydraulic piston. Uh, they had more like a spring setup. A couple interesting things too is if you see that power switch, it's an automatic power switch. It will shut it off when it gets to the bottom. Um, does 45 degree angles, which is pretty cool. But yeah, like I said, these don't come with a motor, so. Um, but yeah, it's some kind of random motor. I'm not sure what it is. It's 110 volt. Um, so the only thing I'm going to do is I have some boxes over here. You kind of can't see them. I'm going gonna, gonna to put a dimmer switch on there so I can control the speed. Uh, rewire it, clean it up. So, first thing I do is I gotta take it off the rack, shorten the rack, rewild it. Um, and then also, yeah, I also have this uh, cookie sheet here, which is gonna be more like a catch because eventually what I wanna do is um, put coolant on there. So, coolant and a chip tray. So, yeah, it's gonna go on the frame once I shorten it down. Here's a better look at it. So, it's interesting how they use the hinges they used. But, yeah, it's just like a gravity fed motor that holds it on there. Um, yeah, like some kind of door hinge right here. I might keep that, except I'm going to paint all this gray, clean up the welds. Like I said, I'm going to use the, try to use the existing metal and just shorten the rack, cut it down to here. That way it doesn't take so much room up. I mean, even though you do actually have this handle on thing, but still, you know. Um, that way I'll fit my cookie sheet better, you know. Um, then I'm also going to do some of my lathe and I can make a custom, like a little panel maybe. Uh, but it actually, it's way heavier than it looks though. Because yeah, like, that thing is solid cast iron. Um, yeah, so I want to take that all, all off and clean it up, paint it. Um, don't know if that thing was factory or not. That little switch. That, that piece of metal, that tab is sticking down, is what hit, hits the power switch when it gets to the bottom. Um, yeah, I mean, there's definitely some things that are better about the Harbor Freight one, um, but there's also things that are better on this one. Uh, like the Harbor Freight one, you can you can tilt all the way up and, and cut it, which I might be able to figure out a way to, if I could disable the, the that thing. Well, maybe not. We'll see. I have to see if I can maybe do that. That'd be kind of cool if I could do it vertical, cut vertical. Um, but like I said, see that hydraulic cylinder? The Harbor Freight one doesn't have the hydraulic cylinder, so you can sit there and adjust it like this. Kind of like the speed coming down to that. All right. All right, so I got get busy. I get my saw and cut this thing off or move it. I didn't even see this thing worked or not yet. Looks like the ground strap came off the motor. Oh. I heard it buzz. Yeah. Plus the AC, the start capacitor is bad. Pressure. Yeah, here it humming. So, I can't do this with a camera. Maybe I can kickstart it. Yeah, well, actually, I'll take this, I'll just take the belt off. See if I can kickstart it. So, let me turn this on. Okay, yeah, that tells me the start capacitor. This thing right here is having issues. So, the start capacitor gives it the extra jolt to get the motor started. I mean, who knows what last time this thing was run, though? From 
a dead stop here. Yeah. The star capacitor. Alright, so you can take a look. It wasn't well, it's not well this tree, I don't it doesn't look like this right here. Like this is shorter here than it is here. So I'm gonna just cut it off here and here and then try to reuse the metal. I don't think I'm gonna store and buy that stuff. It's steel, it's not that expensive, it's not like aluminum or something. Um Plus, I don't think it's straight this way either. Like, I gotta measure it. I'm gonna make it straight. At least as straight as I can. See that right there? It looks higher on that side. Now, it's actually my, it's something I might want when I put a coolant system on there. I want it to be slightly angled back so the coolant would puddle on one side. So, um, I guess I could also adjust it from the feet. I could put feet on there to make it adjust up and down. But just thinking as I, I going forward, where I would know what I want to do with this thing. Um, yeah, coolant makes the blades last way longer. So, well, I think I lucked out today. You can see the hole in my pants. Look, I went through my shoe. I lost control of one of my uh, the wheels. I mean, I know they're super dangerous. It's my fault. So I went back to my DeWalt. But yeah, <laughs> totally lucked out today. Got wrapped up, destroyed my pants, but kept my foot and my legs alive though. No holes in my legs. All right. So, all right. All right. So here it's. Very decent welding. Yes, I mean, it's never going to be perfect. I mean, because I'm not starting from scratch. I mean, obviously, if I was doing it from scratch, it'd probably look a lot better, but... Um, yeah, I just got so many other products going on with the uh, <laughs> costly, expensive projects that I don't want to spend any money on this frame if I don't have to. I mean, that sheet was only 13 bucks. Um, yeah, so it's definitely not as... I mean, I guess it kind of bugs me that it's not going to be clean as I want it to be, but... All right, so here's the shelf, painted the tray. Um, all right, so now I gotta take this other thing apart and clean it up, the, uh, the actual bandsaw, paint it. So, um, yeah, the reason why um, I'm painting with uh, this uh, paint, machinery gray Krylon, is that when I actually add coolant, you want this glossy paint to kind of like resist the, 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 the liquid, you know? Whereas if you run a flat paint, paint it's going to want to try to absorb the, the, the liquid, you know, the coolant. So having it glossy, it kind of is like a protectant, you know, it's very slick. You know, chips don't want to stick to it. Um, that's why, like, everything is, is painted, painted like a, a usually a glossy finish when it comes to CNC stuff. Or lays or whatever. Um, yeah, like I said, it just helps with the chip, chip clearance. So I'm just going to remove all the accessories and all the extra stuff. That way I can paint it, but... I'm actually surprised, this thing is probably 40, 50 years old, and it still holds, you know. The seals are still working, so, um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, Alright, so, yeah, take it apart, and clean it up, paint it. Like I was saying earlier, what I was saying, well, for you guys, it's only a few couple seconds, but for me, it's been a few hours. <laughs> um, yeah, I want to paint this so it's slick. So the water, the coolant doesn't stick to it, and also chips will come off it. You know, nice gloss. Yeah, I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna um, use my buffing wheel, get all that rust off. You know, sand this down. Maybe use some rust remover. Um, just get it as clean as I can. You know. All right. So here are the rollers. I mean, I'm not sure if they're bushings or ball bearings. Um, actually, I don't even have a snap ring small to even get that. I mean, I have small snap rings. I think it's tiny. So. Um, I put my ultrasonic cleaner here. Uh, there's diesel in there. Diesel is an incredible solvent for getting rid of old grease, and freeing up bearings. Um, so get down there. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna go. Yeah, I took off the felt washers. There was like some kind of felt. Um. Alright, so here's an underneath shot of the saw. So I've already been taking parts off. Um, so to separate the halves, I'm only gonna show you things that are actually like kind of like relevant to taking this thing apart. Um, see this. Nylon, I'm assuming it's probably nylon. Well, I mean, it's 60s, who knows if it's nylon or not. Um, there's a little roll pin in there, I gotta hit it, knock it out with my punch, and then uh, this shaft should just come out. You know, this is really the only thing holding the shaft in is this thing right here. So, once I get that roll pin out, I should be able to just pull the shaft out and separate them. Alright, so I'm making some progress here, got some paint on it. <clears throat> yeah, I forgot to film some of this stuff, but I mean, I mean, this thing's pretty basic, it's not. Nothing special, so yeah, I'm gonna have to figure out the star capacitor in that thing. Um, uh, so yeah, I paid. I mean, I cleaned up a little bit more of the rust on the, on the bed part, maybe. I mean, I did definitely got rid of a lot of it, but 
So I gotta work on the electronics, the variable speed setup. I gotta put it back together into my uh, rack. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna do the coolant in this video just because I wanna get, I gotta cut some metal, so. Uh, and then I gotta figure out a coolant system for it. Yeah, so I, these, these videos take multiple days, so I, sometimes I can't remember what I, where I left off, so. All right, so I'm gonna replace the uh, fluid in there with this uh, hydraulic jack oil. Um, so it just unscrews off there. All right, bad lighting here. There's probably nothing wrong with that, but. So I'm, screw, I'm assuming this, this top thing, that there. Um, the screw is probably, I'm not sure if it's the fillet or just as a bleeder. Like I said, the, even the, the, oh, the old manual that I actually found doesn't really say specifically what to do with this thing. Um, but the cool thing is this will hopefully maybe fix the seals a little bit. But it actually seems to hold, so I just, I just felt like it, was, it couldn't go all the way up, so I felt like it was just low in fluid. Alright, let's put it back together. A lot of painting. I couldn't get all the rest. I mean, I didn't really want to paint this machine surface um yeah got the thing cylinder change with fluid um put the band on and then uh get back on the stand i got this thing fish down there so i'm actually gonna have a control box right here like with the dimmer switch or some sort of speed control i gotta touch up some paint areas where i missed it but i've um, got the blade on but like i said before um because my star capacitor's not working right i'm just gonna Huh, work that time. Huh. Weird. Okay. <laughs> That's weird. I was intermittent. Last time the start capacitor didn't work. Yeah, I might want to stabilize that motor a little bit better. That's definitely a pretty low ball. Alright, guys. Making some progress. I didn't notice that the motor wasn't grounded. Like the ground strap was off there. So, might need to. F well. I mean, that's why the Stark Pastor works now. Yeah, see that thing bouncing around so much? It definitely kind of bugs me. So I'll probably end up welding some more, uh, some kind of better hinge on there or something. Put the cover on, that thing. Gotta adjust the, the belt here too. Actually, I think the motor's going in the wrong direction. I think it needs to go this way. I, was thinking, I think it needs to go that way. Well, I, mean, I can tell just by the teeth that it needs to go that way, but um, so I gotta reverse the motor or do something. That's, I don't know. I mean, this is just the way it came, you know, the way it was wired, too, so. Alright, I think I'm done with this for now. A few things I want to do is I want to actually uh, machine a handle, you know, my lathe. I gotta get my lathe going first. So I'm gonna keep that project for later. Yeah, I couldn't really get a speed controller that would work with this, this motor. Yeah, it's a single phase capacitor start. It's hard to get, I mean, it's not ideal for uh, speed control. It's almost impossible, actually. I mean, you can do it, you just feel like you need a VFD, a way to control the frequency. Um, but I couldn't find like a cheap VFD that would actually, uh, you know, for the for this for this motor size. Um, plus, I didn't want to have like a big VFD here just for the bandsaw. Still thinking about it. I might convert to a three phase motor or something. Not sure. But let me show you this uh, goes. And then and yeah, I, we welded this thing. Like this thing used to just flop around everywhere. And then, yeah, like I said, I welded all this extra support in there, and then also I created a turnbuckle or put a turnbuckle down here put tension on the belt because before it was just flopping around everywhere um let me go back over here let me show you how this thing works the uh switch so now i don't know if this is factory or not because i didn't actually uh see that in the manual so i think this might have been added so let me bring down the you guys see that that's cool the actual the the uh hydraulic Cylinder works. That's pretty cool. So in case I go somewhere, you know, I can let this thing run for whatever five or ten minutes and just do something else, and it'll turn off. I'll know when it's done. So 
All right, let's get a sample piece of metal. We'll get it going. Let's make a test cut here. Yeah, another thing I noticed that was cool about this craft one is, I mean, it could be cool and it could also be like a, I mean, hopefully it doesn't pop out, but you loosen this up and you can just quickly slide this back. Well, I can move a little bit up, but you can see, there it goes. Um, you know, so you can stick it in the place, whereas the other one you're cranking away at the, at the Harbor Freight one, or the cheaper one. All right. Quick, uh, yeah, there's, okay, and there's, I don't have to make some adjustments. It's just my first cut, so I don't know what, how this thing's going to behave. Okay. And, uh, quick sample cut. Yeah, the way to adjust is you just adjust these screws. And there's adjustments here. This, this main roller here goes. I had some issues getting the blade to stay on. Yeah, it was, it was a headache, so. Alright, let's, uh, get this a test go here. I'm going to bring it down, the blade down to where you need to go to start. to adjust that. See that? It didn't cut all the way through. But, um, okay, well that's cool. I mean, uh, a few minor things, but, uh, you have this saw. Uh, this hopefully will maybe give you some ideas on how I did it, you know, with the existing setup that I got. Fun project. Cool to have the saw now. So the saw was 35 bucks. I have two cans of paint, which was $10. Uh, the band saw blade was $15. So 45, so 60, plus like this thing right here. So I have about 65 into it probably. I mean, these things are, yeah, if you go to buy like a Harbor Freight one, they're like 300, almost 400 bucks. So, but yeah, this thing's heavy duty, cast iron, American made. Right, so that's it for this right. video. Um, one of the things I want to do is put a coolant pump too, eventually. So that'd be cool to have like some kind of a drip system down here, catch or in the center. I gotta figure out that where the low point is. And then uh, I've seen some people do it with a uh, like a car window washer. Um, just a really low pressure stream of like coolant you know, on the saw blade. Um, that's what the drip hands for. That and I catch the chips. So you saw what I did there. So I don't have chips all over my uh, all over the ground. Um, yeah, it's funny those things, they stick to everything, man. You track them in the house, wife complains. So, um, alright, cool, having fun, man. Alright, hopefully this video helps somebody.